Okay, in this video you're going to look at counting methods and theoretical probabilities. So we'll do four examples. Toss a coin, roll a dice, bicycle speeds, lunch options, and sandwich options, example four. Okay. So starting off, um, let's read this example one. We're going to toss a coin, then roll a dice. Flip a coin, then toss a dice. List all possible outcomes. Then find a probability, get a head, then a three, and so on. So here's a coin, here's a dice. So um, if we, there's two events that are going to take place. We're going to flip the coin and we'll either get heads or tails. Then we'll toss the dice and we'll get something from uh, numbers one through six, right? So what are all possible outcomes when we flip a coin, or sorry, toss a coin, roll a dice. Okay, so there's two two events that are happening, and of each event there are two outcomes. All right, so when f from the coin you can get either get um, heads or tails, and from the dice you can get one, two, three, four, five, or six. Okay, so these are the two events. Now, um, if we combine those events, our outcomes are you could get a head with the coin and then a one or a, a head with a two, a head with a three, a head with a four, a head with a five and a head with a six, right? Okay, or you could uh, flip the coin and you could get um, any num number, any one of those options either. So you could get a tail and a one a tail and a two, a tail and a three, a tail and a four, a tail and a five, or a tail and a six, okay? And these are all of our possible outcomes for this um, process of tossing a coin and then rolling a, a dice. How many outcomes have we got? Right, so we got six, or sorry, we got 12 possible outcomes, right? 12 possible outcomes. Now that's assuming that the dice is, is um, evenly weighted on each side, which we'll just assume it is. Close enough, anyway. Okay, um, so therefore, part B, find the probability that you get a head and then a, a three, okay? So, what do you think the answer to that is, part B? Find the probability you get a head and then a three. A head and then a three, right? So that probability is, there's one outcome that would satisfy that, H and then three, right? You can get head and then three. And that's one possible outcome out of a possible 12. So when I toss a coin and roll a dice, I can get a head, there's a head and a five, that's H5, I'll do it again. Okay, now I've got tail one, T1, see that, tail one. Now I'll do it again. I've got tail one again, I didn't do it properly very good, very well. Oh, now I've got H3, see that, that's the one we were looking for. I'll do it again, see what happens. Now I've got tail two, T2, right? So this is what we're talking about. There are 12 possible outcomes for when you toss a coin and roll a dice. There's T3, tail and then three on the dice, right? Okay, so the probability of getting a head, then a three, H3, is one possible outcome out of 12, isn't it? So the probability Probability is 1 over 12. In math speak, they might go big P in parenthesis, H3, put the event in there or the outcome in there and write that as 1 over 12. That's another way of writing it out. Okay. So part C, and, and that's the same for anything. Like, what's the probability of getting a tail and then a 6? That would be T6, 1 out of 12. What's the probability of getting a tail and then a 2? That would be T2, 1 out of 12, right? And so on. Part C, find the probability that you get a tail followed by an even number. 
Okay, so part C. Probability that we get a tail followed by an even number. So we're flipping the coin or rolling the dice. There we got a head and an even number. That doesn't work. Oh, there's a tail. That might work. And an odd number. No, that doesn't satisfy it. Oh, there's a head. That, that won't work. And an even number, but but we need a tail followed by an even number. So so this is what we're looking for, right? There's a head again. Let me try that. Okay, here's a head again. That's not going to work. Got to get a tail followed by an even number. There we go. There's one option. Tail followed by the number two. Okay. So a tail followed by an even number, we could list all the things that's going to work for that. If you look at our options here, we can see that we have T2. That's one way of doing it. What is there another way of doing it? Tail followed by even number. T4, right? And there's one more. What's the last option? You could get tail followed by the number 6, T6, right? So that's three outcomes that would satisfy this out of a possible 12, right? So the probability would be 3 over 12. Agreed? But what do we always have to do with fractions? Put them in lowest terms, right? So put that in lowest terms and what do you get? 1 quarter, right? And what's that as a percentage? 25%. Probability 25% and as a decimal 0 0.25, right? Part D. Find the probability that you get a head or a tail followed by a number less than 6. Press pause on the video and do D all by yourself. Find the probability that you get a head or a tail followed by a number less than 6. Okay, I hope you've pressed pause and tried it. I'm going to go over it with you now. Hope you pressed pause and tried it. So we need to get a head or a tail. Hmm. Followed by a number less than six. Okay, let's see that. There's a tail. There's a number less than six. That worked. Okay, there's a tail. There's a number less than six. That worked again. There's a head. There's a number less than six. That worked. Oh, this is easy, isn't it? There's a tail. There's a... Oh, that number... Is that number less than six? That is a six. Six is not less than six, right? So what won't work is to get this tail and then six what else won't work find the probability you get a head or a tail followed by a number less than six the other thing that won't work is h6 okay so there's two things that won't work tail six won't work and h head and then the number six won't work so these guys need to be excluded but everything else will work because head or tail is fine as long as we get a number after that that is one two three four or five agreed so as long as we leave out these options we can get any of the other ten the h1 through h5 the tail one through tail five right so the probability is we can get ten out of twelve there's ten out of twelve ways to make this work okay and put that in lowest terms and you get what? 5 out of 6. Or in other words, the probability of rolling the dice and getting a number that is not 6. 5 over 6. That's the probability, right? The one thing I want you to think about though is, you know, when you just flip a coin, theoretical probability of getting a head is a half. And when you roll a dice, theoretical probability of getting a particular number is 1 out of 6. But to get for both events to like get your when we start off head you know and then your three that probability was um, one half times one over twelve or one over six that was and that gave us the one over twelve right so what I want you to know from this is that um, from the coin we kinda have two possible outcomes from the dice we have six possible outcomes two possible outcomes are head or tail from the dice or six possible outcomes get one two three four five or six and two times six is twelve and that made twelve possible outcomes here notice that right I just want you to think about what would happen if we uh, say did something like uh, toss a coin and then roll a dice 
and then toss another coin again, right? How many possible how many possible outcomes would come from this? Right, so if we toss the coin, that can be head or tail, that's two possible outcomes. Roll a dice, that can be any number from one through six, that's six possible outcomes. Toss another coin, that can be head or tail, that's two possible outcomes, right? So for those three events in a row, toss a coin, roll a dice, toss a coin, we should have um, two times six and then times two again, 24 possible outcomes. That would look something like this, you know, head and then a three and then a tail or a head and then a five and then a head or whatever, right? Um, and if you keep adding them on, you just keep multiplying. And so the more events that, you, that are in a row, the more unlikely the, the sequence is that the sequence that you're looking for is. Okay, and so that's what we're going to discover as we go along. So like if you add it on, toss a coin, or, or sorry, roll a dice again, um, now that would introduce six more outcomes. So six times four, 20, four carry the two, 144. And so for toss a coin, roll a dice, toss a coin, then roll another dice, you would have 144 possible outcomes. That would look something like, you know, head, uh, the number five, tail, and the number three, or whatever, right? So that would be one possibility out of 144 if you were to do these three things in a row, right? Or four things in a row, I meant. Okay. Okay, so for this next question, it says a bicycle has two chain wheels on the front and nine chain wheels on the back. How many speeds does it have? So here is a um, picture of a bicycle and you can see on the front it has two chain wheels. This, this one here and then there's one down here. And the chain can go around one of those at a time. And then on the back, I think there's about nine here. We'll just pretend there's nine chain wheels on the back, okay? So essentially, the chain can go around the large chain wheel and then any one of the nine on the back to make nine different speeds, okay? But then you can shift gears, move this chain wheel down to the smaller chain wheel on the front, okay? And now the chain can go around the smaller chain wheel on the front and nine other ones on the back, which makes, which is, and they're all different now. So those are all different kind of speeds. And so that, that essentially make, means that you can claim that the bike actually has 18 speeds because the chain can be in, you know, 18 unique um, positions. Uh, if you take the, the, uh, the two different chain or the two types of chain wheel into account the one two on the front and the nine at the back okay so essentially the answer is you just go two times nine is the answer is 18 but it's it's just interesting to see of course if it's a bit of a of a marketing uh, uh, gimmick you could argue on the behalf of of bicycle manufacturers that because you know with the chain wheel on the the big one on the front and and um, yeah, there's there's a lot there's a lot of speeds that are very similar, uh, let's say, and so, but 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 you but they are actually all different. So you can say that the bike actually does have eighteen different speeds. Okay, so as we discussed, uh, part A, um, we looked at a bicycle. So um, part A, two chain wheels on the front, nine chain wheels on the back. You simply go two times nine, gives us eighteen different speeds and part B what's the answer to part B okay press pause and, and have you got the answer to part B so the answer to part B is in fact 3 times 5 equals 15 different speeds And the answer is, is is the same. The reason is the same. If you have three on the front, one, two, uh, three, sorry about the terrible drawing, and five on the back, one, two, three, four, five. Now there are, in fact, 15 different um, positions for the chain to be. So it could be around this inner one on the front, 
and it could be around the outer one on the back that would be one way which is totally different to any other position because it could be around and so it could be if it's around the inner one the front and, and there's five that it could be around on the back then it could be around the, the the middle one on the front and then there's five more right like you know it could be around this one right and so that's five more speeds and then it could be around the very outer one and then five more at the back and so that makes 15 different positions for the chain